Ah, uh, yes. I now. now I can offer the cat butt on stream. Uh, all right, yeah. so <laughs> uh, we're back. We have animals with us. And um, all right, so we'll pick up here with Celine and Mordecai just having walked back into um, Meow. Well, I, know what you're I, need to, I, need to, I need to go grab my food. I'll be right back. Yep. All right, that, that's fine. I'm doing a quick recap. Uh, so, yes, uh, the group is reunited in the midst of an impromptu party. Um, and, uh, I get, we'll, we'll pick up here with meow. Indeed. I know. Um, Go ahead. uh, tell me, uh, dark wolf, you tell me then. Oh, don't knock stuff over, please. Uh, <clears throat> and then she leaves like, oh, my work here is done. Oh, Nisa. Uh, what, what is the, the scene or the sight that, uh, Mordecai and Celine walk into here. As your prompt is, it's an it, well, it is an impromptu party. Uh, but what's what's happening in the jewelry store right now? What do they see as they walk in? Hmm. I wasn't expecting expecting the party. Uh, so you so you would probably see. Uh, but you know, Bright Bright's doing her thing. She's probably like adding like fairy lights or whatever. <laughs> you know, adding her flair. Uh, Loki's off in the corner. Has shiny new, new uh, uh, horn tips. Probably brooding a little bit though, because it's like ah, I I just got back and and now my sister's getting married. And then you see Norai just like sit, sitting on the counter next to Kieran. Her, her tail wagging happily and her, her legs kicking. And you see she is wearing an extra ring that wasn't there before. What's all this then? <gasps> what the heck? Ah. Wait. Hang on. And he walks up towards you. Mm -hmm. Takes your hand. And looks at the looks at the ring. <laughs> yeah. So she typically she wear she usually wears two rings on her middle fingers. So uh, one one was like her old family crest. Other mm. one was just decoration. But she now has a ring on her ring finger. Mm. He looks over to Huron, and he looks back to Norlai. So. Really? <clears throat> yes. Really? This just happened. You want a muffin? I am a little dumbfounded. Uh. That's unexpected. How long have you been planning this, Heron? Oh, well, a little while. I just... <clears throat> with everything that Norlai told me that was going on, and with you all going off and doing these things, I figured that this was the time. And uh, it was a bit unexpected even for me. But it was something that I wanted to, uh, well, propose to Norlai, and she accepted. Uh, we, we don't have a date or anything, uh, so. But uh, you know what? It's it's summertime. Uh, I don't know if she wants it to be sooner than later. Uh, it, you just got married recently too, so. Uh, I mean, not, yeah, like, not like we could do that a two. That was kind of impromptu as well. Yes, quite so. We kind of just threw that one together last, last minute, more or less. Uh, wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. My baby sister's growing all up. No, no, I just hands you like a, a lemon poppy seed muffin. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I like lemon poppy seed muffins. And he starts to eat it. 
Well, I mean, as a recompense, you could always share with her what we have later. It's true. Uh, Norl, I make a perception. <laughs> do I have advantage on perceiving sweets? Yes, you do. <laughs> Twenty. Okay. As you as you get in close uh, to uh, hand the muffin over to Mordecai, um, you uh, you catch a whiff of something chocolatey on or around his personage. Can I sleight of hand to have my 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 specially inclined tail to grab a sweet? <laughs> It's in a bag, in a yeah. container. So you could try. Uh, that, is, yeah. that has not stopped me. Yep, from so, yep, so go ahead and roll a sleight of hand. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to put this against a... Uh, uh, make a uh, dexterity save, Mordecai. He would have closed this thing up pretty tight. Yeah, given yeah, yeah. Her, given her proclivities. Yeah, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have advantage on this, don't worry. He's absolutely sure that he knows what she's doing. It's a deck save? Yeah. Ah. Uh, so, uh, it, it's That's not an sweet. 8. Uh, it, it is a 21. <laughs> However, uh, the sleight of hand... Uh, so, what happens is, like, she leans in, and I don't know if you go to, like, slip a hug around him while your tail goes to work. But uh, Mordecai, uh, as as you're receiving this hug from Norlai, uh, there's another. Uh, you feel a wiggling uh, in your in your backpack or something, and and you like you go from the hug and you sort of like look over, and you can see her tail like winding around and is like wiggling inside the top of your bag as it's like trying to. Uh, although Norlai, uh, you, you, the tip of your tail does feel some sort of a like a hard container, uh, like a, a hard wooden container or something inside. That's probably where they're being kept. So you're baffled by that. Uh, but at least you did manage to wiggle your tail uh, into the uh, uh, into the, the backpack or whatever. Um, so you successfully maneuvered it in there, but you were caught. Uh, you were caught. And Mordecai, once more, I, you, <laughs> apparently souls are just drawn to habits, uh, whether they need something or not. But uh, you caught Celine munching on one of these uh, wizard caps, and even Norali, just out of force of habit or something, has been drawn to these uh, to these delights, and uh, and so you catch her indulging as well. Uh, I am very well aware of your proclivities, Norali. You can't fool me. What? What do you mean? And he. I'm gonna cast Mage Hand to open the box and take a cookie out. <laughs> While I'm talking. He's kind of maneuvered out of the way by now. Mm. Uh, that doesn't stop a Mage Hand. So, like, she's just like, yeah, gimme, gimme. And then there's just like even a third hand now going doing the gimme, gimme <laughs> as it uh, manifests and is like, cut, like very directly just coming your way, uh, Mordecai, to steal. Uh, I, had, I had every intention of sharing with you. Uh, I, I shared with you, so, so you share with me. That's not how that works. You try. And <laughs> you could ask. Or I could just just take it. I gave you a muffin, so. No, they're all mine now. And he kind of walked away with his back. <clears throat> oh, you've been denied. Um. So th there's a, a couple like just really thrown together like uh, something quick like uh, like a charcuterie board was brought in so you have some sliced up meats and cheeses and some veggies uh, and then there's like some flowers that someone like com like just whatever bouquets you have bring them in uh, so it's, it's kind of a haphazard put together thing uh, and Bright is is providing a, a light show since she has the the. The backstage credentials. I, I I request a sushi board. <laughs> uh, oh, a sushi board. <laughs> yes. Um, Mordecai is actually. The port, so. Well, <laughs> yep. Mordecai would not be opposed to this. Uh, Hiran looks. Uh, I'm I'm sure I could get some of the the fishmongers from the the docks to bring something. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm I'm sorry. I just I ordered the 
whatever was closest. And I think there's a couple places in town, but uh, uh, yeah, stay and celebrate, eat and drink. Everything's uh, everything's on me. Uh, I, I wanted to celebrate uh, because she said yes. Uh, and I mean, this is your happy moment too. Uh, it, it is. Um, I, I'm I'm happy. Get somebody else for... to go get the the food. I delegate. It, Mordecai, it's just it's so tough. You, you run a business long enough, and you're just used to doing everything yourself, and everything has to be right, especially when you take custom orders like I do, and then you delegate. worry about the details. Yeah. And, uh, he looks... You are going to uh, essentially be, you know, I don't know what you would... I don't even know. You're going to be Loki's brother-in-law. You have no relation to me. You know, whatever. Oh, I guess by extension? You're... Sort of? Not really. But... It's more of honorary. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, honorary. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you, you're an honorary brother, and, and hey, look, I, I I see that you have an eye for fine jewelry, and, uh, you know, is your honorary, and then in return, um, I, I'll be happy, if you need stuff, I, I, I can, it, it's a mutual thing, right? We're, we're kind of extending, yeah. the, there's a lot of yeah. benefits in our, I mean, I'm, I know, I'm, yeah. a, I, I'm a brother with benefits, Karen. <laughs> Chill. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Uh, Chill out. Okay. Sorry, I just. Uh, I, I'm happy. There's a lot. Of, uh, can, can you? And he calls over an employee. Can Can you go get some fish, please? To. Uh, yeah, it, it needs to be cut up, please. Uh. Oh, okay. There. I I delegated. Um. Huh, funny that. The, the the delegation isn't going to the deli because that's where I went to anyway I'm sorry I, I can't stop just I open my mouth and just things keep coming out it's I get it oh no I get it people in the circus used to call that word vomit oh I I understand that <laughs> I also oh, I can't deny that either. Um then yeah, I'm huh, sorry for throwing up on everyone. Uh and, and like that draws a couple looks and he looks but no no no, I I didn't actually throw it, 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 it's getting worse. It, it's it, it's it's everywhere now. <laughs> this is a happy moment, Heron. Enjoy it. Yes. She said yes. Yes. That's... You know, that's loads better than some people. Oh, did someone tell you no? No. <laughs> he honestly didn't mean to, to like have an awkward... I, obviously, he's awkwardly blurting stuff out. If it came across as awkward or jarring... His intention wasn't there, although the words still came out. <laughs> yeah, the two people that I have asked said yes. Oh! What? Two? What happened to the first one? Oh, well, that's a tragic story. Oh! Oh! Uh, I'm... Woo! Uh, alright. But I've had good luck so far. Yeah! Uh... I'm... Good. Uh, second time's the charm, right? No. Sh uh, um. I. Why it's did fine. I say that? I. I shouldn't have said that. That's. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Come here. Come here. It's fine. Oh. It really is uh, fine. No, no. I just just grabs here in space and gives yeah. him a kiss to shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> Room. <laughs> Exceptionally effective. Yeah, he uh, like, and, and you see, like, he actually like this focuses him. He stops being like twitchy and jittery, 
and he uh, he he calms down, holds Norali, um, and yes, uh, that that did the trick. Um, Selena has used that trick on Mordecai several times. Uh, he'll break only to turn to you, enjoy whatever, and I'm going to do the same. Sounds like a good plan. Impromptu party. Where's my violin? And he... Forever you put it. He grabs his case from off of his back and, you know, starts to play a jaunty tune. Uh, the music is added to, and it is, uh, it's a nice little celebration here in the shop. Uh, and this it is will... that special violin that he has. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, so th- there's, uh, uh, th- there's, uh, a, uh, an emotive, uh, tone to it. It's not just the music, but, uh, like, emotion does flow through this as well. I mean, primarily to you as the player, uh, mm-hmm. of the, of the violin, but yes. Um... <clears throat> Uh, so the the party goes on. Um, it's it's not like uh, a rager going through the night, but you know some people had come by. Uh, eventually, uh, some fish is brought. Um, you know, there's there's some drinks that are served as the the store is uh, is officially like he goes out and he turns the sign to closed, uh, and then like puts a little note up for a, a private event or something. Um, and so you have several hours of celebrating of mingling if you want of uh of talking or, or doing whatever it is that you want to do uh mm. and then it's it's like closing time the employees are uh are, are being sent off to go home and uh you know they, they can take any uh any food home to their families with them as well to clean out the store and things wind down uh to where it is uh, it is the six of you, uh, the five. Well, I mean, so it's the five of you plus Norlai's fiance, uh, as the employees have left. And if you want to have any, uh, if, if you want to have any conversations or you know private words with each other, this is the time. Or if you if you want, uh, if you want him to overhear anything or to include him on any discussions, you may. Otherwise, you can always take your leave as well and um, do what you want to do. But it's uh, it's now evening, and we probably should head back to the ship at this point. Yes, the ship is probably the place to go. We do have people to find. So, are you all ready? As I'll ever be. Ready, Norlai? Mm. Yeah. It, it's okay, Nor- Norlai, do, do what you gotta do. I'll, I'll be here. Uh, I, I know that you're busy. I, I sprung this on you as well. I don't want this to stop you from... Any of the things that you were talking about. Uh, besides, as it sounded, um, they need you. I mean, with you being the party leader and everything, it's uh, it's important for you to be there and to guide them to wherever you're going to go. I'll be here. I'll be uh, making things ready. And when you come back, we'll get married. We'll And we'll live in a wonderful world that you will help uh, create for us. Mm-hmm. There's helping. Hmm. Um, hmm. I want to be part of the planning. Um, okay. You need to get those sending stones. So I can so I can go in here and we can we can make our plans together. 
Yes. Important. I don't know. Uh, what was... I don't know that what we had was really your ideal wedding, Celine. No, it was very haphazard. Yeah. I want to get married on the beach. The beach is nice. The beach is always nice. I love the beach. Just like staring out into the ocean. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. Alright, Hen. Keep that in mind and we'll we'll discuss details when I get back. Oh, of course. I'll I'll look into any uh any places that would be good for an event like that. Uh if there's any other details, I'll 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 do that work while you're out uh doing what you gotta do. Maybe something a little less drab than uh than a we dress centric ceremony. Well, he looks kind of baffled at your suggestion. I, even if you're telling that to Norlai, like he looks baffled over at you. What what do you mean? Well I mean yeah, our, ceremony, not really our, nice. our ceremony not really seemed nice. kind of sad. Because well, it was all about death. Not really about celebrating the life of the couple in front of you. Mordecai. What? Remember that we have specific experience that kind of has changed our perception. Doesn't hurt to bring up questions, though, does it? No, but remember, context is key. Uh -huh. If I could do it again, I'd probably plan something a little bit more lighthearted. Well, I, do like I late don't know how do my. Do people ever ever have second ceremonies? I, I don't know how my family would take that if it's if it's not a if it's not a a, a Ouija's officiated Babe. event. Don't don't bother with me then. I I can be officiated. I I just like you know the vows. Because, you know, we're going, we're going to be busy enough that we're not going to be able to officiate a Mordecai. Um, I mean, you are. We have the ability to do that. Cloth before, out of the two of us, really. Yeah, but I'm talking about where we are now. Uh-huh. Technically, we have the authority to do that. I mean, if you want to elope. Awesome. I don't exactly have that one ready today. No, we're having I a do. wedding. I do. Get married oh, on yes. the beach. Oh, yes. Talking about, yes, obviously having a wedding. And I'm pretty sure I would know exactly which beach that you'd head to, too. But um, I was thinking more a matter of... If you did want to, I could officiate you right now, and you could have the ceremony later. Like I said, elope. Oh, uh, I I don't know if. Yeah, I do want to have the ceremony and make Which it all special. Is completely valid. So we're going to hold off and we're going to wait till we get back. So I, say, I want you two to be guests. And not, you know, not have to worry about magic and all that. Exactly. Uh, your your brother uh, pipes up Norali and uh, he, he kind of snickers a bit and he's like, why not just elope? It's not like you guys already haven't done it. <laughs> You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm just saying, he goes back to like eating and drinking because he's 
If I mean anything that's left over, he's gonna also force a habit to sort of squirrel mm-hmm. like any spare food in his pockets or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, uh, so, so beach wedding. Uh, yeah, uh, be- beach wedding. Uh, he gets beach back wedding. Uh, we, 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 we can have a week as official. I don't, I don't, I don't really care either way. Um, just uh, oh, we should do custom vows. Uh, Mordecai, having bumped into Lucius mm-hmm. on your way, uh, you go back to the fact that he was able to, uh, in this case, it was also kind of a quick arrangement too, but I mean, depending on if they want an officiant, if the family doesn't already have it, you think back to the, the old Shadahar priest that came down and, uh, his four friends, uh, that were, uh, two bit instrumentalists. So, uh, he had the, the custom eight bit band with him, uh, <laughs> Not that you have to invoke it, but as an option, if you need a priest and a pinch. I, uh, <laughs> I, I am aware that he exists. <laughs> Deal, we beloved. I am aware he exists. <laughs> well, we should get going before uh, before it gets too late. Mm-hmm. Um, you are pulled in for a hug and a kiss by your now fiancé. And uh, he tells you to uh, uh, to be safe, and uh, uh, he uh, the the pep talk. I, I don't know if it's your brother was talking to him, but Hiran does seem to be under the very firm impression that you are the leader of the Chroma Company, uh, and that you know you are making the decisions, and everyone depends on you. And he wants to like reinforce that, you know, with you know no pressure being the leader here. You have it, you know. You have what it takes to be confident and to and to do everything you need to. And he's being very supportive uh, of you in this uh, leadership role. And your brother is like, yeah, that's right. As um, soon as we kind of leave uh, here and behind a little bit, though, yeah, yeah. Uh, Norlai kind of, uh, or uh, Mordecai kind of jabs Norlai in the in the in the side a little bit. Leader, huh? <laughs> I mean, you guys couldn't do this stuff without me. It's true. It's absolutely true. And it's I, just, de- you know, I, I delegate decisions to you guys. <laughs> that makes me the leader. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that, 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 that came about around full circle and bit. What a kind of bit. Please take him to rest of Balalai's shoulder. <laughs> Oh dear, sweet Narawai. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, it, look it, it is am, Loki's idea. I am one hundred percent backing up our leader's positions here. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of, she kind of just slow turns to Mordecai like. She's the leader. She she just has like a proud pose to her. Who am I to deny this astute and charming young woman from being in the leadership role that she very much deserves? I mean, if you think about it, I also created us a base of operations and a business and a side gig. She's not wrong, Celine. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I just... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I suppose you're not. That was all her idea. Well, yeah, it was your idea. With Bright's help. Mm-hmm. See? The young woman's coming up in the world. Uh, 
Uh, speaking of oh. going up in the world, you are at Gaspard's workshop and you begin the ascent up to the airship dock. Uh, Gaspard is, must be at the Orphanarium still as uh, he doesn't greet you. Uh, but there is one of the, uh, there is the emotive Kyberner that had welcomed you before, uh, who seems to be stationed in there. And uh, as you approach, uh, the door actually opens for you, and you are greeted with a bow, um, uh, you know, with a, a bow and a flourish. And um, you're welcomed in. Well, we should get underway and also talk to Selter, DJ, and Cypher about potential places where we can find this demon lord of ours. I mean, Cypher does kind of want to murder Mercury, so... So... Uh, Mordecai is going to head up to the top deck of the ship to to find Cypher and Selder. Okay. So, all aboard? All aboard. Mm -hmm. all okay. Aboard. Hmm. I need to... Old Loki deleted. <laughs> Deadbeat. Goodbye, old Loki. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you uh, you're led up by the uh, the courteous uh, Kyburner. Uh, you cross the airship dock, and the seemingly uh, silvery and seamless exterior uh, manifests a door. Uh, the door opens, and uh, well, inside is the uh, the juicy center of the Repentless, um, which, while familiar, I don't know, still squigs you out, or at this point you're like, eh, it's a living, and you walk inside all the same. Um, uh, you make your way through the the winding uh, tunnels, uh, and uh, well, tunnels, hallways throats, arteries, I don't know, it's some sort of a <laughs> something that gets you from one point to the next. Um, uh, so you want to go find DJ, you said, Mordecai? Uh, Selter and or, Cypher. So, uh, Selter and Cypher, I'm sorry. Celine, are you with Mordecai or do you want to do something else? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with... With, the, with that, especially since uh, Celine wants to be present for this conversation with Scyther and Seltzer and Okay, uh, you wanted Bright with you too, right? Yes. Uh, I, so. I, I want to talk to Seltzer. Oh, alright then. Uh, well then, I guess the... Uh... Because she she loves juicy news. Um, oh, that's <laughs> true. That is true. She, 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 she is, she is a, a, a massive gossip. Uh... She... Which, uh, I got plenty. <laughs> uh, and your brother will go because your brother kind of crushes on brother. Selter. So, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> um, that works out. Okay, then. Hot damn. <laughs> so, you, you make your way through, uh, back to the, uh, to the, uh, estate <laughs> at the, <laughs> at the back of the ship. Uh, and you, uh, you make your way inside. Oh, do I even... Um, you will be met in a, uh, in a similar fashion, like after having just seen the emotive, uh, the emotive Kyberner, you, uh, it's, do, do, do. I guess those are just the hallways. All right. Well, whatever. Um, uh, you see, well, a live person, DJ, who greets you in a very similar fashion, uh, gives you a courteous bow, and um, 
asks what he can do for you. Now, the Kyberner didn't really speak, but it, it at least went through all well, the motions. Um, well, we need to talk to yourself and Selter and Cypher. And we have a demon lord and a five-headed dragon to find. Oh, and I have news for Selter. Oh, news is always welcome. Uh, and if you wish to indulge with anything else, then just let me know. Uh, do you require any snacks or beverages? No, no I think we're fine. You just ate. All right, you're led through the interior of the ship, which has uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, borrowed items, uh, the reflections of what your mom was talking about, about, you know, this thing that was rumored to come down and eat just, you know, uh, mercantile caravans and other airships and buildings and such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, you are brought into the usual meeting room. And I gotta add Loki here as well. And we also do need to bring in. Actually, not there. She's not going to sit in the seat. That is that is pedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, after DJ uh, guides you through the ship, takes you to the meeting room, um, and if there's anything that you need, he will make himself available. But he tells you he needs to take care of something first. Uh, and uh, Professor Cypherius will enter and greet you all, and he will take a seat in uh, that very large, comfortable-looking chair um, and ask you... Uh, he'll uh, he'll make a, a quick motion, and that same kind of static comes up uh, where he tells you, before the meeting occurs, is there anything that you need to tell me in confidence? No. Well, I figured I'd ask. Uh, then, with that out of the way, he makes a, another hand gesture, and that that static field disappears, and it goes back to the creepy ambiance of this uh, otherwise luxuriously appointed office. Um. DJ will come back, and uh, he will bring uh, some cups of uh, water, um, and he will make himself... Uh, he will situate himself... Uh, he'll be standing... Uh, well, at the entrance of the room, if that's where, like, the camera for the p the background picture is. So this, this would be as if DJ was looking at you all uh, from his perspective here. So he's standing in the room by the entrance... Uh, Cypher's here, and then, of course, uh, as usual, the fireplace uh, lights up with a green uh, a green and black flame, and the smoke pours out in the uh, usual uh, dramatic fashion, and coalescing from the creeping smoke as it uh, crawls across the floor uh, is Selter. Selter, guess what? Well, someone has some news for me and just can't wait. <clears throat> Karen proposed to me, and she just points to the ring. Is that so? She mm -hmm. uh, wafts over in your direction. Um, her her lower half is kind of like the, 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 the classic sort of genie smoke cloud kind of tapering off behind her. Uh, she's mm -hmm. not fully manifested here. And uh, she holds her hand out to you so that she can uh, take a look at the at the ring. Um, she shows it off. Leans in close. Wow, that's a fancy piece of jewelry. 
Mm-hmm. He made it himself. Uh, yeah, that's a unique bauble you got there. So, um, if you want to come to the wedding, you're invited. There's a wedding now. Well, we're oh, moving of course. quickly. When is it, and where is it? Um, we'll let you know. We're we're we're, we're still planning. We don't have a date yet. I want to have it on a beach, though. Oh well, all the better. Although, I dare say, Norlai, a beach might be fine, but I'm sure I could convince Cipher here to make the ship extra fancy if you want one on board. As nice as it sounds, I, I, I really like beach weddings. Hmm. I think it's just very pretty. But if yeah. you want to have, like, an after party or reception. And I will say, my dear, you are doing well for yourself if you're marrying into that kind of money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, after the ceremony, if, uh, once you receive word that, uh, everything's all official, if you so happen to need him to disappear for a while such that things might legally revert over to you let me know and she gives a smile like all her pointy teeth and even like a, a drip of like glowing green jewel a, a drool like kind of pours out uh, or not oh, pours no. but like drips out uh, no we don't need any of that I'm pretty it's... sure that's considered a state fraud oh Mordecai ah <laughs> uh. You're talking law to someone who chooses not to recognize that sort of thing. Doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you. But the other matter is since Still a fun matter. Since you lot are the airfaring folk. Had any word about our friend Casimir's wife or the woman who stole her? Well, Cypher, uh, Cypher leans forward and uh, is contemplative. Nothing so straightforward, I'm afraid. Though I have been, I have been doing a little bit of thinking. And... Oh, 16 or 16. While I don't have specifics, I think I've been able to... Hmm, maybe narrow down the list of possibilities. If... And I'm, I'm going to presume a little bit of the background of what you discovered was shared, like, is the background conversation after the pleasantries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, <laughs> the, the offered, uh, uh, the offered fraud, uh, uh, from, uh, from Salter. If she can't go to Oiho, there's a couple other places I think that she might go instead. As I don't see her being one to just brave the wilderness and hide out in a cave or anything. As I, I don't even know what that would do for her. But, uh... She would go someplace with... I think influence. Or some sort of a way to... Exercise her power or authority given who she well, is and what she is well given what we know about her she's she's insistent on educating the young people of this world I, I don't quite understand what the goal is behind that but 
she's fixated. She she spent a long moment educating all of us in how to get to Oiho. Or at least was long-winded about it. I don't know that I learned very much. In that moment, I was a man of action, and I wasn't really paying attention. But maybe that narrows something down a little? It does. And to that extent, I, uh, I think that she would... she would go someplace where there are people who wish to learn. Uh, now, with the unfortunate circumstances surrounding Uct, and Bright kind of gives a, yeah. And even Fallfire, as I remember, I, there was a the university there that I had once served at, which feels like a lifetime ago. Uh, those are probably also off of the map. And besides other branches of institutions found there, well, if no one's heard from her yet, it would be some clandestine place where there's still authority or the ability to wield or offer power and education. Uh, that could very well be some kind of a military establishment. Uh, it could be uh, one of the forts here in Mesomasca or uh, even elsewhere, as there's a contingent as well out in uh, the Islandian desert along the border. Uh, I would pray that it's not an infiltration of Operation Welcome, Matt. Um, I could also oh, think God. of... Uh, well... As she has apparently had dealings with Weejas, she also might be uh, held up in or even protected by one of the major institutions that uh, are of the faith, where she can wield power and teach. And there's one other place that had come to mind. A place where there are many open minds and those who are willing to learn. And that would be the monastery. Here, uh, to the northeast in the mountains. A rather out of the way place where well, everyone is accepted as people just go there to learn and reflect and to. Uh, I guess get away from the greater world and be one with themselves. Or with the Earth. The world. From the things that you've been talking about, that is a distinct possibility, but uh, I'm sorry in this instance, Mordecai, I can theorize, but what it is that you're exploring is a concept that I can entertain, but... I suppose at this point I would need more faith than knowledge in that avenue. But if you see that there's merit to it uh, from or outside of my logistical thinking, then of course uh, that could be a destination or a location as well. It wouldn't hurt to swing by there on our way to other places. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure where the most prominent educator of, like, the pro most prominent kind of education place for the faith of Weejass is. We have temples here, sure. May I roll a religion, please? Yes, you may. Oh, come wow. on. <laughs> uh, come on, Celine. You tried to think it, nothing happened. No. <laughs> Boo. Uh, Celine, maybe you're just uh, caught up in the moment, or 
there's a there's so many options it on the table that uh, yeah, it, it's not coming to mind right now. Hmm. Well, do I know where the most prominent place like that is in Mesomasca? Uh, well, maybe not the greater region of Mesotopia, but the, in Mesomasca. Uh, there is the uh, there is the ossuary, uh, which is uh, which is the hub that has like the uh, the leader of this branch of faith, and hey, it already was subverted by one warlock patron. Why not two? Uh, <laughs> um, so that can come to mind. Um, and uh, there's uh, there's probably some other uh, prominent locations as well. None that we've already visited in the uh, in the uh, in the game, at least not yet. But um, mm -hmm. you know, of course, every major city does have a uh, have a temple, like it, like a major, yeah, like a, a, a like the major part because that's where that region would have its centralized, you know, um, uh, good works and and paperwork and. Uh, and like dormitories for the the service members or for people who need uh, some sort of care or uh, you know uh, it's not a hospital but if, if someone needs uh, that or, an or, or an infirmary or even uh, funerary services so hmm. each of the big the big cities uh, will have a major uh, will have like a, a major uh, temple of the faith. Uh, mm -hmm. Though the ossuary is sort of like then the head of all of these major divisions. Okay. Okay. Well, I think our first stop then is to check out the monastery, see if there's anything sus out there. Why did you shorten the word su suspicious? You could have just said suspicious. Bright looks over to you. It's because we don't have a lot of time. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> so is that where we want to head next? Well, might as well. I mean, it's not too far, and... And we can head somewhere else afterwards, so it could be on the way. Yeah. Somewhere else. If you're wanting to say something, Celine, you're muted. It's better than any other option at the moment. Well, we're looking for... A woman who recently started preaching, I guess, there. She can take the form of a tiefling, doesn't mean that she can't take the form of who knows what else. What about Tam, Bright offers? Can she be changed? I, I don't know. Would it be obvious just dragging around a, a dragon? Dragging a dragon? Let alone one with five heads. I mean, that's, that's kind of my thought too, but if she's got her captured as a prisoner... I wouldn't put it past Mercury has some kind of magic thing. She'd probably put her in a magic hamster ball. Much like she did you. Yeah. So, idea, says Bright. You got a 28 on her arcana. I know that we have a list of places that we can go, and I'm I'm fine with that list as it makes sense. Let's see, there's the there's the four major cities uh that have or the the four the four ports that have major places, the capital, and then of course there's Old Port. So even though there's four directions, there's really six big cities. Uh anyway, uh then there's the monastery, which I guess is a religious place, just not religious. Or they're religiously non religious. Uh, <laughs> um so there's a seventh, uh, and that's here. Um, there are there are some other libraries and places uh, I can you know in Candor as well uh, that I can think of. 
But... I but. do think there might be one other place. It might be a little out of our way, but it might be a place to check as well. Um, <laughs> so, you know how I had the that vision, you know, from the volcano? Remember when it exploded? Um, and, mm -hmm. well, uh, so I saw some things. And part of that was uh, not just the the repentless uh, becoming what it is now, but and she looks over to Professor Cipher. I I saw I, maybe it was it was something that I think was related to you, or if not you, you then uh, gauntlet you, or however that 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 works. Is is your gauntlet a a different thing? Uh, anyway. It looks like you weren't the only one who wore that gauntlet before. Um, there was something... It looked like there was a ship at some point in time that had someone who wore it, and it crashed, and then you went on to find it, and then you got cursed, or if it's not a curse, then, it, then you know, I take those words back, but then you got cursed with the gauntlet, and now you're... Um, a part of this. And she makes like a vague everywhere gesture. <laughs> but in part of that, I, I think it might have been related to the ship. And f at least from what we know of you, you have you have relations that go back to uh, Shadahar as well. And I'm kind of thinking, because I also kind of absolutely did see it in my vision. What if she went to Shadahar? In my... Why? In my sight, I saw an orange woman wearing scholarly robes who was teaching a young... a young tiefling boy. I think this is when Cypher would speak up about uh, what he saw in the. Um, yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome to speak as Cypher. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I suppose that reminds me of something. Mm -hmm. When we were uh, journeying through Oyo, and we all had our respective visions. Uh -huh. What I saw was an image of Mercury teaching the Child Emperor of the Shadahar Empire. Isn't the Shadahar Empire at this point nearly frozen over? Oh, uh, you know, that would be the perfect place to hide because it's the last place we would think to look. We would think she'd go somewhere like hot, but if she goes somewhere really cold, there's also the there's also the point of uh... well, their technology is kind of based on things. It is, that but not only, who do you, who, right? yes and yes and who do you think taught them that? Her. Now, there's something else that I would add to this. There are quite a number of Shadowhaw fleeing. Have you thought that maybe this might be because for the few places where it is still viable to live, that there is not enough room? Well, I thought they were leaving because it was getting cold up there. Oh yes, very, very much so. But there would be bastions. Probably full bastions. Like on the southern reaches of the Shanahar Empire. Oh, even into in Aslandia. Even in the capital city, perhaps. But the thing is, when you when everything starts getting colder and the people who are living up there can't get into the capital city to live, and it's the choice of leave or die by freezing. They'd rather one leave. is one is want to emigrate south to warm pastures. 
Mm, like a desert. Like a desert. But, uh... I would also point out that the Emperor has not been sighted anywhere in Mesotopia. Right. One would think that he's still ruling what's left of Shadahar. If she had some control there, where do you think she might go? To the last bastion of people she has on her side. I mean, it makes sense. Seems like a long way, though. Bright pipes up. Um, uh, desperate people. I'm, you, I'm sorry, you forgot a word. Desperate people. Hmm. Thank you, Bright. That just simply makes my point even further. Oh, of course. Uh, I've had plenty of experience with uh, people fleeing their homelands in desperation and sorrow. Oh, hey, water! She leans over and just quickly starts drinking out of a cup. It's a thought, for sure. It's not too much of a stretch, I don't think. Because that's also the point of we... Operation Welcome, of Matt. My father's part of that. If she gets can if she, if she manages to convince the Shadaha to push further south, become more invasive. Then you know, every country south of them is, is at risk. Yes, it'll be those participating in Operation Welcome Mat first. Uh, DJ clears that. clears his throat. <clears throat> if I might be so bold, I have a little bit of information that can help provide some context to this conversation. Please. By all means, DJ, go ahead. I so happen to have learned that, uh, well, there are dwarves that live here in Mesomasca, and... Uh, they themselves are a very small contingent or populace as a holdover or perhaps immigrants from those who are native to more northern climes. And I also heard from uh, several black and red birdies that uh, the dwarves who are a part of the Shadahar Empire have also been, uh, well, the relations between they and the Shadahar have always been tense, more like the Shadahar had occupied everywhere around their mountains, and ended up almost forcefully uh, acquiring them as a part of their territories. As such... Uh, some of the innovation and other things that were provided by the dwarves to the Empire have been, well, from the dwarves, but it would seem that the dwarves have been content to hunker down in the mountain and not open their gates to the, uh, well, depending on who you ask, some would say occupiers of their lands, at least the exteriors of them, or just outright enemies. Not that there's not dwarves who work very well within the Empire itself, as some sort of diplomat or functionary, but it would seem that there is some friction in offering their mountain as a safe haven from the, from the growing cold in the north. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, 
And if the Shadowhar couldn't crack the mountain through force before, uh, simply relegated to defensive diplomacy and uh, forced cooperation, I imagine being refused a safe haven of uh, uh, from the uh, the cold that that has been a part of their decisions to move south. Then I suppose a lot of it makes sense that we should check out Shadahar. And not really check out the monastery then? Well, Shadahar is pretty far, and we should probably check things that are close by before we go far. That way, if she's not where it's far, uh, we don't have to come all the way back just to check. I mean, that's entirely true. Kind of poke around the monastery. Because, like, she could be in Chattahar, but she could also be, like, anywhere else. Yeah, that's that's the real kicker in it. Because she could be anywhere. She could be anyone. She could... She could be toying with the mind of the child emperor. She could be toying with the minds of the monastery monks. She could be she... in this room. <laughs> I don't know what devils and demons and all of that other gobbledygook is capable of, so I wouldn't know. Yeah. I can just... assure you, says Salta, you are in a room with a very powerful being. Though I can assure you that I am no Mercury myself. She wishes she was me. <laughs> well, theoretically, she could be in this room. I know you went back in this room. So, is that the itinerary then? Check so we the check monastery, the monastery first. And then head toward the Shadowheart capital? Should we check the volcano again? Because, like, we didn't actually check the volcano. We just assumed that she wouldn't be there. Well, like you said, Norlai, at some point we could just try and poke the hornet's nest. <laughs> and just say, hey. Maybe we could poke the hornet's nest before we go all the way to Shadow. I mean, we could. Did we actually try scrying on Tam? We know what she looks like. Uh, you. That she was not able be. to be targeted, but you. Mm. Uh, but Casimir gave a part of himself to Bright as a very intrinsic connection, and so mm -hmm. uh, he can be scryed upon. Okay. Um, well, Bright, Bright will say as as a part of this because she was intrinsically drawn back in, and also she continues to pretend to drink out of a now empty glass cup because uh, she probably felt <laughs> something. The mask slipped a little bit about uh, the, her emotional state when she said what she did. Um, well, I I can. I, I can't scry on her. I can scry on Casimir, and I can get a hold of him. So... I mean, we can all get a hold of him, and that's not the issue. Well, we can, but getting a hold of him might be better, not just to touch base, but to give him a direction. Uh, Casimir at least was a hunter, and I imagine that he still retains some of that. But I think the things that we're talking about would be above his head. Uh, as he never really came across as quite a religious person. Or an intellectual person. Or... She goes down a list that kind of... Uh, she's saying out of sympathy, but again, it's sort of coming across as almost like a... 
uh, a list of detrimental qualities of Casimir. Um, oh, no. You know, of like personal flaws or just mm. deficiencies. Um, if he wants to head in that direction first, we can send him off. Well, I think if we give him a direction, you, we could treat him sort of like a hunting dog. Uh, you tell him where to go and what to look for. Though the thing is, I don't know if he can not be a silver dragon anymore. So sending him to any place really might get him killed if it's a big city with a lot of magical defenses or something. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's assuming that, you know, you can kill him. He's a pretty tough dragon, you know. Uh, that might be. But we've also seen a lot of dragons die. Uh, no offense. Um, we've seen one dragon die. That's a lot. I haven't. I saw. <laughs> I haven't seen a dragon die before that, and, and now I, I saw one. Seen a dragon at all before that? Uh, we should, we've seen two, technically. Well, if Casimir counts, he's kind of a mutant. Also, we killed that dragon, so does it really count? Selter introducts. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. You've seen three. Oh yeah. Um, there no, you would is... count as the fourth then, if you count. Uh I believe that I would prefer to be uh, the, well, su the, the superlative that would dragon. Be five. That'd be yeah, five, five if Tam counts. Siphonics. Uh, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't like the direction this is taken. I believe that I am the most notable and prominent of all the dragons, apparently that you've now seen. And so oh, yeah. the, the you, rest can you come after. And but... Kazim, okay. So you, Saphonix, Halver, um, Casimir, and Tam is five. Or should, should, Tam, <laughs> should Tam count as five? You, you and Bright actually just say that question at the exact same time <laughs> as you look across the room at each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we've seen nine dragons? Uh, far too many. Uh, anyway, I tell you that uh, I certainly would like to come to know Casimir a lot more. The others, oh, what a shame, uh, rest their rest their hearts. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she goes on about being a dragon and being the best. Uh, and then it, it kind of comes back to a bright interrupting Selter, uh, who gives her a growl and calls her a chicken nugget. Um... Uh, well, I think what we should do is we should think about this until next Friday, and then uh, we should make a course of action. And <laughs> uh, I think that the course of action, though, is heading to the monastery, poking around a little bit, and then okay. heading to Shadowhar. Then... Well, I do think we should try to check the volcano before we go all the way to Shadowhar. Then the... Uh, you you can commit the plan when we uh, you know over the course of our time. Though one other thing I will need to know as uh, as DM is: Do you want to get a hold of Casimir? And if so, do you want to ask Casimir to investigate or look or do something? Uh, keeping in mind that yes, he is very mobile and he's a dragon, but also he's a dragon. So people may or may not want to attack him or work with him or worship him or want to kill him. But uh, do you want to send him in a direction and do something other than I will hunt on my own? Uh, look, but don't do anything yet till we get there. But head in the direction of uh, Shadahar probably by way of the mountains that kind of separate Kandor and Aslandia. All right, so you want him to stick to the mountains and start making his way in that direction? Yeah, so that he can maybe give us a scout okay. at the Shadahar Empire. Is that uh, party leader Norali? Is that <laughs> <laughs> is that what you want to do? <laughs> hmm. Yes, that's a good idea. We'll do that. And we should check out the volcano after after the monastery. <laughs> that is that that is the plan. 
All right, so Casimir will be sent to the uh, the the mountains bordering the desert, uh, heading in a slow northeasterly direction, and you all are going to start to the monastery to investigate there. Um, yeah. Okay, and then from there, I mean, we'll see. You might get information from Casimir, or you might get information from the monastery that will change it. But those are your your next courses. Um, all right, then. So we have that in mind. Um, uh, then that is uh, that is the uh, the direction we'll go. Uh, then what I will do is uh, I am not going to be lingering tonight to do uh, I, I'm not doing any workshopping, uh, but I'm going to take us right into a raid, everyone. Uh, and in fact, we are going to return a role playing raid as uh, Fiar the Tank Girl has come in and given us some raids uh, recently while Dark Wolf has been streaming on the channel. And uh, I want to return that favor, uh, and uh, we'll we'll give uh, her and her crew a um, a role play raid as well. Uh, looks like they are playing some D and D and have something going here. So uh, I want to thank you all as my players for a very it was fun and emotive and it was very wonderful. Uh, we have a course set, <laughs> and so the 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 downtime stuff is taken care of uh, you are equipped with uh sweets treats memories uh, engagement rings and other jewelry etc and next week and you're feels. gonna set out oh yeah you have all the feels uh in all oh, the yeah, um, manifest. Well, while we're while we're on on seltzer ship we should purchase uh purchase required items from Loki. uh yes while you are on your mobile magic shop uh this is a mm. chance to grab any uh, last minute mundane or magical items and uh, and get equipped because uh, the you're gonna give the order and Selter will honor it that you're now gonna make your way uh, to the monastery yep um, to advice the guide so this is your location is the pink spot on the map here and uh, all right so I'll see you over in uh, Fiara's channel, everyone in the audience. Thank you for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the role play session and you got fun and or feels out of it as well. And uh, I will begin broadcasting if I can if I can rye like prize the the channel back from Dark Wolf's Paws uh, on Tuesday for the anniversary and all the celebrations. And one last note: when we hit three thousand followers and we're super duper close to it, I will reveal. Uh, I will reveal my plans to give away, speaking of Tiamat or Tam, a gargantuan Tiamat uh, with free shipping to a U.S. address. This is like the a... size of a cat. Yeah. A it, large cat. It, it's like a oh, 400 ish dollar prize, uh, all things considered. So, stay tuned, spread the word okay. of the channel, and, uh, and have people follow. I'll see you over in Fiara's channel, everyone. Goodbye.